Hey guys, I'm currently working on my Emily guide, but for now, there is something I wanted to quickly talk about regarding her, and that is how I think she's going to be insanely powerful in Natlan, quite possibly a meta staple for a lot of teams. I'm sure you know by now, but Emily is a pure dangerous sub DPS that does a lot of damage if you continuously apply burning to enemies, and the damage she deals is extremely high. A lot higher than basically everything except jungling in a national team. To put it into better perspective, Fischl in an aggravate team with Kazuha buffs does around 500,000 damage, Farina in a forward vaporized team with Kazuha buffs does about 510 damage, Chiari with two dolls deals between 430 to 510,000, Yai in long rotations where she bursts every rotation with low ER requirements, and Aggravate plus Kazuha buffs does like 550,000. Zhongling deals about 660,000 in a team where she is hyper buffed, such as International, and about 380,000 if she just has Bennett and Kazuha buffs. And then we have Emily, doing about 570,000, just as long as there is off-field Pyro application, and someone else holding deep wards so that she can use Unfinished Reverie. So that's more damage than almost every other sub DPS in the entire game, with just the absolute bare minimum of buffs, as currently there aren't many good ways to buff her since she doesn't snapshot. In fact, right now her damage is so high that if she is given her signature weapon, she's doing over 750,000 damage, which is almost equal to the damage some of the DPS units she will be used with deal, such as Risley. And then if you give her C1, R1, she's just straight up doing over 1 million damage as a very simple to use sub DPS with, again, the absolute bare minimum of buffs. But right now she is restricted by the fact that she needs your team to have a consistent source of pyro application, which is fine if you have an on-field pyro applier, but current off-field pyro units are just not very good, so that's holding Emily back quite a lot. However, Natlan is right on the horizon, so in several months we are going to have the Pyro Archon, whom I think we can reasonably assume is going to be an off-field Pyro Applier, with some form of team-wide buffing, likely attack percent. So if we just say as a random example, maybe the Archon is giving an 80% team-wide attack buff, now Emily is doing over 700,000 damage at C0 with a 4-star weapon, which is higher than what even International Zhongling calcs at. If you put that on Emily with her signature weapon, now she's doing like 950,000 damage, which is just straight up more than a lot of on-field units. So even though Emily doesn't provide any direct buffing for her team herself, her damage is just so high that it can outweigh using a buffer, especially once we do get the Pyro Archon, Assuming Koyo doesn't say F you and make her another on-field DPS, as long as they don't do that, and as long as the Pyro Archon and Emily can fit in the same team together, I would not be surprised if Emily ends up being the best in slot, or at least comparable to team's best in slot units, as long as the team does have space to use her and doesn't get screwed over by danger application. But even putting future impact aside, even with just what we have right now, Emily is quite a solid character that you can get, get good value out of pulling in the current meta. In fact, I might dare say if you use her on field, I think she's the best Dendro DPS unit in the game right now. This isn't me telling you to pull Emily, just that if you do, you might get good value out of her now, and even more value out of her in the near future. I'll cover her current teams in my guide in the coming days. And that's really all I have to say right now. Emily Guide is again coming in just as soon as I am able to get footage to use in it, which is a bit hard without having the character myself. But if you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts below. Thanks and goodbye.